Hello everyone and welcome to the uh, Bedrock Edition Advanced Machinery Tutorial. Now in this episode I wanted to just go over some of the other generators uh, that we have available in the mod pack in the add-on. These are <clears throat> the advanced solar generator in my opinion is probably the most useful out of them uh, and it's not too bad in the sense of resources. I mean, it's pretty expensive, but once you get the resources set up like we have here, building these isn't going to be too bad. I built in my modded flat world, I was able to, with just the resources on hand, was able to uh, get about seven of them set up. So you have the advanced solar generator that's an option there's also the the regular one which is a little bit cheaper it's uh, this one only produces four rf per second whereas this guy produces 10 rf per second so it's really a a big big jump in rf so personally i would just Go with the advanced solar generator and out of all of the extra generators that we have in the pack uh, besides the dragon egg generator this i think is probably the best option for you but there are other ones as well um, we've got the water wheel which is really really simple that one produces two rf per second not a great choice in my opinion but I mean, very early game. I mean, the resources are relatively inexpensive. You can get the glass by using your hammer to, uh, you know, beat up some cobble, cobble to gravel, and then gravel to sand, and then cook up your sand, and you'll have glass. So that's a relatively simple way to get it. Uh, water bucket, that's pretty, pretty easy to, to get as well. And of course, now the water you get from a wooden barrel. You throw leaves in a wooden barrel and you'll get water. So that's where your water can come from. Uh, and the wooden barrel is, you know, super cheap. So, yeah, I, it's, but it's only 2RF per tick, uh, per second. So, eh, you know, I mean, you could build a bunch of them, I guess. But the lava setup that we have over here, I think is far superior. Uh, other than this one. This is a good choice in addition to your lava generation over here. Uh, well, we also have the steam, whoops, also have the steam generator, which requires a piston and copper and more glass. I'm not a big fan of it, although it does produce 30 RF per second. I'm not a huge fan of it, uh, but you would set this one up the same way we set up the, the uh, lava generator over here. So. Yeah, I mean, it'd be the same kind of kind of setup. It actually produces the same amount of uh, RF as well. So it's, instead of lava barrels, instead of the stone barrel, you'd use the, the wooden barrel. So, I mean, it's really the only difference between the two. And then you'd use the steam generator. Uh, I, I would say this would be a little bit cheaper, but you got that piston there, which is a bit of an annoyance that you have to make the lava generator i think is a little more straightforward but you do have the lava so yeah it's a bit of a trade-off there the other one is the bio generator and that's how you craft that one and the bio generator can use um, wood logs leaves and saplings and you can now this one only produces 20 rf per second you can automate this but it, it will take you some doing. You're going to have to create a chopper for a tree. And, and it's, as you can see, the chopper is 100 RF per, per tree. So that's a significant amount. So you're going to have to have, just to break even, you're going to have to have five of these. And I would say you're going to end up with getting at least 10 of them to, to get any sort of significant uh you know, surplus of, uh, that would give you an extra hundred 
Well, not only that, though, you need to have the vacuum hopper, which takes another 10 RF per second. So, you know, you're going to have to uh, maybe throw an extra generator in there in the mix in order to cover this because you're going to the chopper will chop up the trees. You need the vacuum hopper to which requires an eye of ender vacuum hopper to suck everything up to put it down into a chest but then out of the chest you're going to have to drop it onto your chain of bio generators and you're going to have to use something like a a dropper with a a uh, a comparator and some redstone and stuff like that so i just don't think this is a a good choice now once you get your tree farm set up you know why not do this you know you can the this the tree farm the chopper is going to produce all of these items here it's going to produce wood it's going to produce leaves and it's going to produce saplings so the wood you can keep i mean that's useful and if you combine the bio generator with with the sorter and just pull out the oak leaves you could run the oak leaves to the bio generator along with maybe extra saplings you know when you get a good supply of saplings to run the saplings through there as well uh i mean you already have your tree farm set up because you know you're going to do that eventually right you're going to set up a tree farm i think once you do that then sure why not you know get your bio generators going off of that line by pulling out the leaves uh and any extra saplings because i mean really what are you going to do with the leaves uh you could uh, if you got a stack of leaves that's good enough for decorating them and you know in the wooden barrel i mean if you if you set up your steam generation system you'd probably want to you need them for your wooden barrel obviously uh so you could divert you know one line of your chopper to uh this setup if you had it set up and another line to uh you know, a, a bunch of these, if you've got those set up and you can do that through the router, the router will automatically just route stuff. It, it does it randomly, but it'll route stuff in multiple directions. So, I mean, that's an option once you get where you're going to have the tree farms. I mean, tree farms are something you're probably going to set up anyways. So you could take advantage of it with the bio generator, but until then I wouldn't, it just, it just takes too much to do it. And especially when you're getting started, I just don't think it's worth it. Uh, and over here I've got now here we can take a look at our see we're doing good on the on the the power at the moment and uh, I've set up a bunch of these and you can see the little the little particle effect here I think this is a good setup you, these actually don't need to have any sky you could you could put these in a cave for example and they work the same way it's just a passive RF generators, all it is. Uh, so yeah, you can stack them up like this. And I've got uh, what, two, four, six, eight, ten. So I've got twenty of them going here, which is a lot. But you know, once you get your resources set up, and uh, part of it, I think, is because uh, this guy's not uh, not working, or is it working? Yeah, it's working. Okay. Sometimes when you log in, that Crusher doesn't work. I don't know what the what the story is on that. I'm gonna let me switch over to uh, creative mode here. And uh, yeah, these you just you just place down once you get them. Just place them down like so. Now the water wheel again. It, water wheel is passive. You just place it down, and there you go. There's nothing nothing else you have to do with it. So that's one nice thing about that. Now this the steam generator. Uh, requires the water and it'll once it's like the lava generator but it's with water instead of lava basically the same thing and then we have the the uh, uh, bio generators and it'll take a log a leaves and saplings so again you know once you get your tree farm set up you could use that as well now automating this guy uh i think would be very similar to automating this i haven't tried it yet 
uh, because I think the lava generation is just, it's just the w way I went. But I mean, it's kind of basically the same thing. But I've noticed that there's a, a, a an issue with with this, and I'm not exactly sure why. In fact, you can see, I don't think we even have our, let's throw that down in there. Uh, I've noticed, and I'm not sure what the problem is here. The, uh, I don't know if it's a matter of just a visual situation or whether it's actually the case or not. But if you put more than one uh, bucket in here, it, the other buckets seem to disappear, and it seems like you only end up with the one bucket. Mm. So I don't know what, what the story is on that for sure. It's a little odd. Uh, as you can see, we got the one bucket. I threw, there were, I threw that one that I had in there, and these aren't filling up, so it's not – I don't think they're invisible. I think it, they just disappear. But the one bucket seems to work fine. And, and the only thing I did on the modify this was I just added more, more barrels to it so that there's a higher chance of getting uh, lava as it goes through. You know, every time it goes through here, it's going to pick up at least lava. And I had four buckets going and they kept disappearing. So, I, and it, it would, they disappear and I just end up with one bucket. So I think that's probably a bug of, hmm. But it works fine with one bucket. So, yeah. And so it's probably uh, automating this guy, would I would suspect, would be the the same kind of thing. Uh, the problem is the uh, the leaves. You know, the, the leaves would require a chopper in order to generate the leaves, and then the leaves would have to be funneled into this. Whereas this, I can use the uh, cobble generator, it's just a single block and it, it generates the cobble and the cobble goes in here. So this, I think, is definitely a better better way of doing it than this because this, this just adds some more stuff to it. But like I said, once you get the tree farm going, then, you know, you should be good to go. Now, on this, on this setup here, now this generates, uh, it requires 100 RF, but it only requires 100 RF when it actually converts the blocks over and realistically speaking you're not going to want to automate this like i have it set up here i mean how much nether rack are you going to need and if you really need a lot of nether rack you might as well just go to the nether and get it i mean you know you can get obsidian the way i did it in the flat world you just get obsidian by taking your barrel, making lava, put lava in a hole and pour water on top of it, you know, with a, and then pick it up with a diamond pickaxe. I mean, it's real straightforward, nothing to it, you know. Uh, and again, on soul sand, how much are you actually going to need of this? The way I have it set up in my flat world is, is I don't have this automated. I just have it sitting there. And when I need it, I just use it manually. And I think that would be the way to do this rather than automate it like I have here. I just wanted to automate it to, just to show you that it can be automated. But honestly, in this particular setup or this particular block, I don't see any reason why you would want to automate it. Uh, and besides, if, if you, you're you going to go to the nether eventually anyways, probably in most and most uh, playthroughs. So, yeah, I mean, you can get all that stuff from the nether easily enough. Uh, but again, I wanted just to show how you can automate that. And and all of these follow the same pattern, and they're all really straightforward, and super simple to do. Now, next episode, though, we're gonna we're gonna start getting into some much more complicated things. And what we're gonna do is we're going to automate these. So I'm not going to worry about those guys, but I'm going to automate the um the the um auto sieve, going to automate the auto sieve. And instead of doing both gravel and um sand I'm just going to do the sand because the sand gives you the amethyst shard along with all the other stuff. 
except for the flint. You don't get the flint. Well, I, and you don't get the copper either, though, do you? Yeah, you don't. Yeah, that's right. You don't get the copper with this. Okay, so I'll do both. I'll do the I'll do the gravel, and we'll do the sand because the sand gives us the amethyst shards. So we're gonna need that. Yeah, we want that. So we'll do the amethyst shards, and then we'll do the uh, void miner as well, which produces the actual ingots. You know, in addition to the ancient debris and diamonds and whatnot, that gives us the ingots. So that's really going to be a, uh, actually though, actually, actually, yeah, we get copper from the void miner. I forgot about that. See, this has, this has it. I'm trying to want to be efficient here. Yeah, yeah. So I think if we do the if we do the void miner, which gives us copper, ancient debris, all this good stuff here, and we do the sand, which gives us all of the different pieces, you know, all of these different uh, nuggets, plus the amethyst shard and we get the coal and redstone iron, we get all that stuff. We won't need to do the won't need to do the um, gravel. So that'll be a little bit simpler setup. So we'll do, we'll automate these two things and that'll give us all the resources that we are available in the, in the add on. So, but that's going to require a lot because we're going to have to have a storage unit for each one of these, which you can tell is quite a bit. And then a storage unit for each one of these, which is not as many, but there's still quite a few here. And the storage unit is, uh, let me go back to um, survival here, just so we can look at the recipe on it real quick. This is the storage unit here, and it takes a diamond, a diamond block. And so we're going to need quite a few of those guys. So that's going to be quite a few uh, resources there. So yeah, this is going to be a big, a big project. So next episode, uh, I'm going to have to spend some time figuring it out because we're going to need to use the, we're going to need to use the, the, I'm not sure if we need the router might, but we're definitely going to use the conveyors. We're going to need the sorter. That's relatively inexpensive. Uh, the sorter, a bunch of these guys, and of course our setups over here and our conveyor belts. So yeah, there's going to be quite a bit of quite a bit of stuff, and it's going to be somewhat. I have an idea how I want to do it. Uh, it. It's just a matter of getting it set it setting it up and seeing how it's gonna gonna work. But once we get the thing set up, then this will cover all of our all of our storage needs here. It's a little wonky how you have to kind of work with it and access it. So yeah, we'll have to, I'll go over this. I mean, we're almost full on this chest here. Double, this is a double chest and we're almost full on it. So, I mean, yeah, we can't, you can't really continue to store everything in chests. This will store a lot more items from what I understand. I don't know exactly how many, uh, but it will, should store quite a few quite a few items so uh, yeah we'll go through that all there it's going to be somewhat of an elaborate system but uh yeah we'll work on it when we uh uh on the uh, uh next episode so anyways there we have it i just wanted to show you these other generators and the pros and the cons on them yeah so there you have it i will see you in the next one it's going to be a big episode next time so yeah be sure you, you uh subscribe so you get that one and i will talk to you in the next one bye bye now